I'm here today to talk about an idea uh, we had during some conversation at the uh, ETP and uh, Nanomedicine Board. But prior to going to this idea, let me just take a few minutes or a few seconds to present Nanobiotics. Uh, so we are a private company founded in France and mainly uh, financed by VCs. So far we have secured 26 million euro. Uh, we can say that our lead product today is into the clinic and trying to treat a patient with uh, soft tissue sarcomas. Obviously, we're working in the nanomedicine field, but in the nanomedicine field where nanoparticle itself is the active principle. So that will be it for nanobiotics. And um, we'd like to talk about something. And what are the potential new ideas to answer the huge and met need in translational research? In the nanomedicine field, of course, but at the end, this is not very specific to nanomedicine. We can say that this is more specific to innovation, with maybe two things that may be uh, important to nanomedicine, is time and money and regulation, three things. Because in the healthcare world, you know that it's usually more expensive, more complicated, and longer to develop product for obvious reasons. So this is a simple question, but prior to go to a potential answers, answer, because there is many, let's try to refocus and to refine the question itself. So what is the need or what are the needs? Of course, the life, the real life, is much more complicated than what is written on this slide. It's less black and white. But still, let's try to focus on a different aspect of this problem. Today we can say that there is a number of excellent academic research group uh, with a good knowledge and good expertises providing excellent research. But when we look more carefully, uh, most of them, they don't have what we can call access to market. When I say access to market, is the ability to define what will be the real unmet medical need that a product should fulfill. So there is a need to better understand the market. On the opposite, there is a large number of pharma company or medtech companies that have a huge and large and good access to market with the knowledge of how to develop a product, which is also a very important thing. But on the other hand, those companies, they cannot take that much risk. They have to work and to develop their business plans on controlled risk. Also, there is a small number of SMEs that are trying to bring some new innovation into the market. But at the end, they are very small and fragile. So they cannot transfer all this potential innovation into product. It's only useful for a few products or few innovations. And final point will be, when we look at the money invested in all those projects, especially in, um, in early stage projects, most of the time those projects are not marketed oriented or not unmet medical need oriented. So there is also a waste of money in those projects. I'm not saying that it is the case for all the projects, but there is a number of projects where it is the case. So a fair conclusion, even if there is many other parameters, would be to say there is a huge need for efficient translational research, but there is nothing new in this, uh, in this need. So a possible way forward would be to imagine, imagine a new structure. But if we want to summarize this need, from one hand, we have the research new concept in nanomedicine. On the other end, we have the market, the hospital, the patient. And today, as I said, few SMEs trying to fill the gap, but still, there is a huge gap. And usually, the nature is filling any gap. But when we look at this, it's been a while that this gap is present. So maybe it's time to give a little push to the nature to make this gap being filled. So we had an idea, which is only an idea, and uh, may not be the only possibility, but why not create a structure, and the term structure will have to be defined more precisely, that will fill this gap. 
a structure that could take ideas, product, concept, prototypes, and to bring it to a stage where this product could be considered as a de-risk product for industry. So obviously, in a development, there is a number of stages, including discovery, lead optimization or definition, preclinical development, clinical, marketing approval and marketing exploitation, and a number of other parameters. And from one hand, the sourcing of project, and at the other hand, the product itself sold on the market. So we thought that maybe an organization that will have a good sourcing of project that will be able to deliver a number of milestones for this product, will be able to deliver what we can call a de-risk product to industry or a de-risk concept. And if we can provide this, at the end, everybody should be happy because there will be more innovation, more product, more patient treated with new product. But we cannot do this alone, as we said, and people, structure, what is already in place is very important. And we know that there is a large number of stakeholders, uh, not only the one I have mentioned, but many others. So rather than creating a new system, completely new from scratch, we think that it's better to use and to leverage what is already existing. So to do so, this structure could be in the middle of a number of stakeholders, but here there is a key issue or a key problem or a key task to do, which is linked to the interfaces with the different stakeholders, because we all have different incentives, we all have different view of how things should be done and what we should get out of it. So this structure, regardless of the final term of the structure, should be really efficient in interfacing existing stakeholders and also leverage the existing forces. So a basic for innovation could be huge interaction or large interaction, sorry, with hospitals and academic research or also some SMEs. At the end, to be able to provide what we call a direct product to industry. So this is kind of very uh, general presentation, uh, let's say a concept presentation, but we went beyond this point with a number of partners that are also present in this room but also people coming from different angles that are named here. Uh, will it be some venture capitalists, also some regulators in Europe, academic centers and hospital, and also industry, to, to try to make this concept become a reality. So why to do this? Because at the end, that could provide new product in EU, but also for the rest of the world, and we could build on an existing ecosystem, something which will be sustainable for the nanomedicine field. Um, my personal opinion is that kind of structure should be really business oriented because to bring a product from zero to market or from zero to industry or from a concept to industry, then there is a need to have business incentives. So my goal will be to work around the structure, which is really business oriented. So what are the next steps? What are the key tasks we already started to work on, but there is a lot of work to do. First will be to really refine the business model and also including, which is not an easy task, what will be the funding mechanism for such a structure? Will it be from purely private? Will it be a mix between private and public company or funded by EU or other kind of partner? That's an important question. And how every stakeholder will get their return on invest on this, regardless of what is the return on invest they, they expect. How do we leverage the existing forces? How do we interface all the existing stakeholders? That's a key question. And we may have some answers for that. And at the end, because if this happened, that would be kind of a big structure. So there is a need to define a clear governance and structure for that. 
So that will be it for my uh, presentation. It was a short one, but because what we would like at this stage is for you to react to these simple ideas. And also, if people want to join the, the game, please feel free.